Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to take your seats? We are already out of Swiss time, so I cannot make my usual joke that in Switzerland we should start punctually because so we are already eight minutes uh, behind schedule, which for Swiss standards is really an eternity. <laughs> we'll try to, to make it up. Um, uh, the, uh, I would like to welcome you today, our second day of meeting of this uh, Alea event the second day for those of us who participated in the business meeting yesterday, and the first day for those who come as guests of the scholarly and scientific event of the day. Um, in a few seconds, I will hand over the moderation uh, to uh, Vivienne Parry. Uh, I will introduce her in a couple of minutes, and she will also moderate session one and four of today. Uh, we, we are gathered today to um, uh, think together on a topic that ALEA, the network of uh, European Academies of Sciences and Arts, has chosen on, occasion of its, on the occasion of its 25th anniversary, which is science and society in present day Europe. This is probably hardly a very original topic, this is something that basically all of our institutions are currently concerned with. But it's an important uh, topic because it concerns, especially as it relates the interaction with society, it concerns us all as scientists, but also as citizens of this continent. We had yesterday evening a very interesting and to a certain extent impressive event because uh, we awarded the Madame de Stahl Prize to a figure, to an, an economic scholar, Professor Mazzucato of University College London, who actually stressed uh, in a very forceful way how intertwined three spheres uh, are that we traditionally in our uh, analog world tend to consider or tended to consider it separate, which is the public hand, the private hand, and science. We think in our so iconic models in our he uh, heads as three different realities. And Professor Mazzucato showed to us that in fact they are not, that the, the interaction, especially in view of durable innovation, the interaction between these three spheres is inevitable, and it's actually the only real motor of innovation that we can think of. And uh, as an example of, of this close interaction between the public hand, science, and the private hand, we have today, we are accompanied today as kind of object of a test. We are all part of a test of a startup of, of a very minor university of our country called ETH. And uh, so it's surprising that in spite of the marginality of the institution from which they come, they have developed as an important st startup, SEER uh, vision, and they are, we are so the, uh, the object now of a, of a uh, beta test that they are uh, conducting. And uh, they, they are a startup on, for le lecture tracking, hopefully not for my lectures as I uh, see now, but uh, we, they are uh, they are certainly uh, so going, doing to do, uh, going to to make a good job to improve the quality of the reception of lectures at Swiss and hopefully for them universal institutional level. Thank you for being with us. The um, academies of science uh, have played a special role in the recent centuries as facilitators of exchange between science and society at large, because they were historically the center of what we now call the Enlightenment. We, they were the institutions out of which the in, Enlightenment perspective, and to a certain extent, the Enlightenment narrative also uh, developed. And 
they developed over the centuries uh, an ability to explain science in what we call a non-partisan way, what in, in uh, German is called Gesellschaftsberatung, advising society at large and using science as produced in the institutional setting of societies, usually universities, but you, uh, using science as a bridge also to reach out to society. And part of advising society is that of uh, to provide a complete picture of the issues at hand. In our daily scientific work, we try to achieve this through what is called interdisciplinarity, or better now, trans disciplinarity. In this symposium today, we are precisely doing, uh, trying to do this, to illuminate the interplay between science, society, and policy from many angles as possible, keeping in mind the conditions of the, the enormous transformation, which is both technological and social and societal that we are undergoing, and that is more or less usually uh, so su summarized under the heading uh, uh, of digitalization or digital term. For the first session, we have decided to invite two important scientific and scholarly personalities, and these are the president of the European Research Council, Jean-Pierre Bourguignon, whom many of us had the privilege to hear yesterday, also yesterday evening, uh, in his laudatory speech for the award for Professor Mazzucato, and also my particularly esteemed and uh, close colleague and friend, Madeleine heron Ersch, who is the director of the Institute for European Global Studies at the University of Basel. And when I say my friend, you know, I have in mind the fact that my wife tells me, when you say all your friends, are you sure that they like to be described as your friends? Well, <laughs> nope, I'm not sure, but she'll have to live with that also in this presentation if I describe her as, as my friend. After, uh, after this, uh, there will be a short discussion on the matter between the two uh, leading figures of this debate, Professor Bourguignon and Professor Herrn Oesch, and also with three other not less leading figures, including myself, although I'm the, the least leading of all of them, so with, uh, with Leslie Wilson, Secretary General of the European University Association, and Josef Georges of Science Europe. Uh, our colleagues and partners, I must say now, after yesterday's meeting of the Global Young Academy, will then share their thoughts, three of them are with us today, and they will share their thoughts on the potential of what they call a re-enlightenment in the current world, in the current digital world. We already discussed the issue of how important this term, or perhaps this myth, depending on our creed, of the Enlightenment is in, in our current life. Following a musical interlude and a greeting from the mayor of, uh, Bas of Bern, or not of Basel, not yet, Ber mayor of Bern, Alec von Grafenried, we will hear from the foremost citizen science initiative in Switzerland, and I would say citizen science in the most global possible term, which is a section of our Swiss Academies of Arts and Sciences, which bears the name of Science et Cité. Science is clear to everyone. Cité, not only in the sense of city, but precisely in the sense of society, of, uh, of, uh, of civitas in the Latin sense. And uh, it's going to be what I think we know nothing about this session, because they, we like to keep the autonomy of our academy is completely untouched, but the, uh, we will hear a, an engaging session on what promises to be an engaging session on the importance of landmark scientific evidence shaping public presentation, and it will have the moon landing as a point of departure the 50 years since that event. Uh, many of you will uh, probably have asked themselves what this uh, bizarre logo on the uh, uh, so on our 
so map of the our, our, our documents for the 25th anniversary of Alea is. And in fact, this logo is a visualization of the places where all our academies, all our almost 60 academies are around, the, uh, around Europe. So if you combine them in an iconically significant and iconically hopefully also persuasive way, and then you remove the uh, shape of the geographic shape of a continent, that's basically what you have, and that is the result of uh, what we all bear with us uh, for, for this for this event, that we are right. That is uh, the result of this construction. Uh, we hope that this type of play with the potential of digital communication and also of the condition, geological, geographic conditions in which our continent operates also will be uh, taken as a point of departure for a fruitful discussion during the day. Lastly, our colleagues of SAPEA, many of you have heard yesterday what SAPEA is. I will not summarize this today, otherwise we will go even more in time beyond schedule uh, uh, because it's a rather complicated enterprise. Suffice to say, that is the voice of the European academies at the level of interaction with policy making and science policy uh, with the EU level. And our colleagues in SAPEA will take today the example of microplastic in our environment to illustrate how science can inform policy makers on topics that strongly resonate with the public and that have a profound impact on our everyday life. Just a little housekeeping before turning over the moderation to Vivienne Parry. Uh, there will be video, a video and videos and photographs taken throughout the day. And as there will be a change in the seating arrangements during the lunch break, please do not leave things in the room during the breaks. Well, the first break, but not during the lunch break. Throughout the day, as was the case yesterday, you can grab recent Alea and Sapea publications at our stands or stands in the foyer. And of course, our teams in the plural, both the team from the Swiss Academies of Sciences and the team from Alea are prepared to respond and to deal with any practical question or any existential issues you might have at uh, any, you might feel at any moment during the day. Just a uh, short summary, there will be uh, the guided tour uh, so for Bern Scientific, but we will uh, uh, touch on these issues during the afternoon. So I thank you for your attention, and I turn over the floor to Vivienne Parry. Merci, Fimon. Thank you.